Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. I'm Tundra Abiola. Good morning, I'm Veronica Odeka. Our next guest, Toye Ibitoye, is a Nigerian sports analyst and journalist, an alumnus of the University of Ibadan and the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University. Toye Ibitoye was on March 18, 2015, appointed as media officer to the Nigerian national football team, the Super Eagles, by the Nigerian Football Federation. Mr. Ibitoye is here to talk about the progress of Nigerian senior men's national team, the Super Eagles, at Nigerian football in 2018. Good morning and welcome to The Morning Show. Good Thank morning. you so much. It's a pleasure to be on your show. <clears throat> so let's start with the current position of the Super Eagles in the monthly FIFA rankings. Where, where are they now? Yeah, we are fourth in Africa and um, I think about um, 44 in the world. Um, but that, that's, that's um, an improvement on what we were uh, a few years ago when we were out of the top 10 in Africa mm -hmm. and we were around 16, 65 mm -hmm. um, in the world. So we've made some, some good progress and um, we hope to keep shooting up. So what do you think has been the big difference from in the past and now? If we're ranking fourth and be previously before we weren't as great, what do you think the difference has been? Do you think yeah, it's like the team member, leadership? Yeah, a, a lot has changed about our team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, we have had some down moments. Um, we didn't qualify for uh, the Nations Cup in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't qualify in 2017. Mm -hmm. And the Nations Cup is supposed to be a garden of the best yes. football teams in Africa. Mm -hmm. So if we are not able to make it to be amongst the best teams in Africa, yeah. um, it's a big shame for a country of mm -hmm. uh, a stature mm -hmm. in, in football. But, but thankfully, um, after this failure, mm -hmm. um, we were in a very difficult group for the World Cup, uh, a group that had um, three out of four at the last World Cup, to yes. show you how difficult that group um, was, Nigeria, Algeria, Cameroon, and Zambia. And uh, along the way, Cameroon became African champions. And to qualify for the World Cup from that group, uh, the way we did, such a convincing manner, uh, for me, was a turning point in our fortunes. And um, I, I think it has a lot to do um, with the quality of the leadership that we had from the Nigerian Football Federation. Um, they brought in a coach, um, Franco German, mm -hmm. Gennot Raw, who brought in organization, discipline, um, solidarity mm -hmm. into the team, brought in a lot of young players, and we surprised everyone. Um, qualifying for the World Cup. And of course, the World Cup um, was um, early this year, earlier in the year, um, June, July. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't do as well as we wanted. We wanted to go very far, but we ended up uh, leaving uh, after the group stage. Uh, but then, in spite of the fact that we didn't go beyond the first round, we saw elements of um, a great future, of great potential in the team. Um, we saw how the team played well. Mm -hmm. We saw a lot of positives that we can build on um, going forward. And after the World Cup, um, we were able to prosecute our qualifying games for the Nations Cup and qualify mm -hmm. with one game to go. Um, so it's, it's a turnaround from not being able to qualify mm -hmm. for two editions yes. in 2015, 2017, mm -hmm. and then qualifying for the 2019 edition with one game to go. Mm -hmm. Um, clearly marked difference, and uh, we want to continue to build up. There has success. been a marked difference for which you know credit must be given. But what exactly would it take to actualize all this potential and return Nigeria to the glory days of the 1980s and 1990s with the Super Eagles? Yeah, of course, the first thing would be for us to uh, show stability in leadership. The greatest problems we've had mm -hmm. um, as a country are usually um, self inflicted problems. Yes. Uh, we'll press the, the, the stroke button by ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing for us to do is to make sure we don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, we keep the stability that we have. We keep the unity that we have in the team. Um, everyone across the globe mm -hmm. uh, and everyone in Africa um, will look at our team and say, look, this is what we want to be like. Mm -hmm. A lot of very young players who are doing so well mm -hmm. um, in their clubs, across Europe, mm -hmm. Uh, have been fused into the team. So it's important for us to keep that spirit together, mm -hmm. keep the leadership together, keep stability together, mm -hmm. and allow this team to evolve, learn, um, gain experience, gain exposure, rise and fall and rise again, 
and be able to, to make the, the kind of mark that they should uh, on the global stage. I believe this team, yeah. um, with the way it is, and the support that the Nigerian Football Federation have mm -hmm. given in terms of helping us to plan, um, helping us to travel for games in the best way possible. We hardly fly um, regular um, mm -hmm. travel flights for games. Mm -hmm. We usually fly chartered flights, mm -hmm. you know. So we travel in comfort. Mm -hmm. We're able to plan our time, mm -hmm. cut off uh, delays, mm -hmm. go for games very refreshed, and maybe that's helping us to get the results. I know that in when it comes to football, or team unity in any sport, there has to be a cohesiveness, not only with the leadership to direct, but also with the players to feel comfortable enough with each other. And, you know, from uh, our country, where we're able to produce so many superstars across the globe in Europe that play for so many other countries. Why has it been so difficult to, to recruit them to want to play for Nigeria and to continue to have that cohesiveness? And do you think now that you said with all the things that are being put in place that we will continue to see that with stability with the same players or will there be opportunities for the new players to come in and create that stability that would drive us forward to begin to win the championships that we want? Yeah. Um... A team is always evolving. Mm -hmm. There will always be room for good players in a team. Yes. Um, just like there will always be room for talented worker in any organization. No matter how um, staffed up you are, yes. if there's an outstanding uh, person outside, mm -hmm. you will always find a way to create a little room yes. for such a person to come in and, and have quality to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, the same uh, um, applies to the team. Um, a lot has changed in the last couple of years. Um, we've lost a lot of our top Nigerian born players mm -hmm. to other countries, mm -hmm. England, um, and some other nations like that. But mm -hmm. things have changed a little bit uh, because these guys also um, see what is going on with your team. Mm -hmm. and, but let me uh, just inter interject this. A lot of times I, I've, I feel that people have pride in Nigeria. They want to represent their country. And unfortunately, even if we don't want to mention it, the fact is that these players that have been born Nigerians, that are much older now, have wanted the opportunities. But when you go and you play abroad, where there is discipline, where there is structure, you need to be equipped with the right training process, and you need to have stability there. And they've, they've experienced those things. And now that they've gone off to join other teams and probably represent the other countries, and not necessarily more Nigeria, are there changes in place so that when we are recruiting these newer generational players to come and play, that they will have the due processes of things that they need to be able to play at the level and stay representing Nigeria as well. Yeah, that, that's all we have to do. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to attract those who have grown up yes. um, playing for you teams of very organized countries mm -hmm. like England or Spain yeah. or other nations, mm -hmm. then you have to step up. Mm -hmm. And um, thankfully, in the last couple of years, we've been able to attract some of these very talented young stars. Mm -hmm. Um, and Alex Iwobi, for example, mm -hmm. um, is a key member of the team. Mm -hmm. um, um, Ola Ino um, is a key member of the team. These are guys who came in from England, mm -hmm. having played at the youth level for England, mm -hmm. and easily want to identify um, with the Super Eagles. Chuba Akpom, mm -hmm. all of these guys are, are asking to be part of the team. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at um, Leon Balogun, for example, um, German born, you have mm -hmm. Truster Kong, mm -hmm. uh, Dutch, Born, Tyrone Ibui, these were guys that were with us at the World Cup, Brian Edo, mm -hmm. Russia. So it's looking good now. Um, they can see, because you know, all of these things is also about what you perceive. Yes. You see a young team, you have a sense in you that this team is up to something great, mm -hmm. you want to identify. So we have to keep this structure in place. We have to keep working on our team to make it attractive to some yes. of these young stars to easily want to come across and, and play for us. What are your thoughts on the state of the Nigerian League, which is ideally supposed to feed players to the national team? It could always be better. Definitely, it could always be better. Uh, our league, um, a lot of efforts is it's going on. The, the way our league is structured needs to change. Um, almost all our clubs are government clubs. Mm. Um, if you want to take out the non-government clubs, we'll probably be talking about maybe three mm. or four clubs. And that, that's, that's a very small percentage of those that you have to work with. So we have to change the structure of, of our, our clubs. Um, and as you said, the real uh, bedrock, the real measure of development is how you organize your league, mm -hmm. how your clubs are organized, um, what can they offer. Yes. Um, the clubs are the closest to the people. Um, let me give an example in Nigeria now. Um, in Kano, for example, mm -hmm. the closest to the Kano people um, it's Kano Pillars. Mm -hmm. The Super Eagles looks a little far off. Yes. 
They can only maybe see when the Eagles are playing a game on TV and then see players, uh, it will be um, your Gallo and all of that. But Kano Pillars, these guys live amongst them. Mm -hmm. So the closest to the people are the clubs. So we really have to structure our clubs to be able to have good grassroots program, mm -hmm. um, take care of, of kids from 5 to 7 to 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, who they know from amongst them. Mm, so yes. we have to really structure that. And that, for me, is the biggest challenge we have at the moment. Um, right now, um, we have a little problem around the league not starting on time, um, the, the second-tier league insisting on some things, the NFF insisting on some, something else. These are issues that need to be ironed out because, for me, the potential is good. Um, if we can fix our league, and um, that's the way we can generate a lot of employment for young people, make them busy when they sell tickets, uh, sell merchandise for match days and all of that, get them involved. Uh, that, for me, is the way to go, but we really have a lot of work to do uh, in that regard. The Eagles are doing well, mm -hmm. uh, but we have to get our league to also um, stand up and, and be counted. But do you think the Eagles are doing well in your official capacity? Can you take your official hat off for a second <laughs> and assess the Eagles' performance in 2018 just as a fan? How would you assess? Yeah, it was, um, as a fan, it's, it's going to be difficult for me to <laughs> separate myself as a media officer of the team. But, mm. but I, um, I look objectively at um, 2018. The year opened up for us with the uh, African Nations Championship in Morocco. The best we've ever done was uh, finishing third. That was in 2014. But this year, we finished second. So that's um, a step up. Um, yes. So that, that's a good one. Uh, for the home base player, that tournament is mm -hmm. for players in the Nigerian league. So it was a good one uh, for us, good way to start the year. And of course, the next big one was the World Cup, yes. the build up to the World Cup. Um, the World Cup, well, in 2014, we got to the second round. In 2018, we lost out. We were almost making it through, but a few minutes to the end of the game against Argentina, we lost out. So could have been better, um, but as I highlighted, there are a lot of positives to pick from our outing at the World Cup um, that will lead us to the future. And of course, after the World Cup, we have to come back to the issue of qualifying for the Nations Cup. We lost our first game at home in the campaign for the 2019 Nations Cup. We lost at home to South Africa 2-0, but we had a remarkable run from our second game, third game, fourth game, and we have now qualified with a game to spare. So it's a remarkable turnaround for us. And now we can look forward to, to the Nations Cup next year and hope that we can do what we did in, in 2013, which is um, to win it again for, for Nigeria. We hope so too. Well, I would ask, what is your general outlook for 2019 with all of these positives mm. that you've talked about? I mean, it sounds so easy. You said, okay, we should do this, have this in place, but in general, how realistic is it? Because, you know, with, with, whenever there's change, it takes it's a process. And a lot of times it, it takes time. It's a slow thing. It's not so easy. So with there being so many changes within the recent years and, you know, between the players and management, and what is your outlook in general? How long do you think that we can get to the place where we're really stable and we have a, a proper fighting chance? Yeah, let me also add that um, I didn't talk about the women. Mm -hmm. um, the girls also did They've well. They've been doing very well. Yeah, they oh, qualified. Yes. They won the, yes. um, their, their Nations Cup for the ninth they, time, yes. the Falcons, mm -hmm. and they are going to the World Cup next year. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things we'll be looking forward to seeing next year is um, how well these girls will perform. The mm -hmm. Nigerian Football Federation have announced that they will have good build-up games mm -hmm. starting from January, about eight build-up games mm -hmm. before the World Cup. We hope this prepares the team mm -hmm. to be able to do very well. Um, qualifying for the semifinals will be a remarkable achievement mm -hmm. for the girls. Coming out of their group will be good. Mm -hmm. Getting to the quarterfinals will be good. But let's hope they can, they can also mm -hmm. do something outstanding. Yes. Um, the under-20 under mm -hmm. are also having the World Cup. That's the men. Yes. The under-17 as well. So it's a very busy year mm -hmm. uh, for Nigerian football. If we can achieve remarkable success in mm -hmm. all of these competitions, yeah then we can look at 2019 as being a remarkable year for us. I believe it will yeah, be I want, uh, I wanna, for us. Now that you mentioned the, you know, the women, I didn't really want to bring it up before, but now that you gave me that little opening, let me ask you this. In your opinion, why is it that there seems to be so much light 
when it comes to men and then playing football. And with the recent records, the women have actually, like you just said, outperformed in their own segments of playing football. Why is it that the light, they're not giving as much accolade and there's not a lot, a lot of appreciation in their direction in the media as a whole, as opposed to the men? Why is that? No, it's, 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 um, it's an issue I hope mm -hmm. will um, be addressed in the days to come because it's global. Yes. Um, the amount of money that comes in from qualifying for the World Cup for men mm -hmm. doesn't compare to what doesn't. we get for the women. Yeah. The TV audiences for games mm -hmm. at the World Cup for men is not the same not. for the women. So there's a disparity. Yes. And um, sponsorship, revenue, depends on how many people are watching. Yes. So if they are watching a lot more for the men, about half of the population of the world mm -hmm. saw the World Cup final yes. live. It's not comparable to what we see yes. with the women. So we really have to get up to that time when um, we get the highs to see more of the women's yes. game yeah. and then appreciate it the same way they appreciate the men. That's mm -hmm. when we can begin to talk about having the same pause, mm -hmm. having the same reward, mm -hmm. having the same attention. And um, we hope it happens. Mm -hmm. The same applies to tennis. Yes. A lot of people are complaining. The guys are getting more. But yeah. now there's an avenue for mm -hmm. everybody to get the same. So yeah. we hope it comes into football as well. Well, I feel that in, in, you know, in any sport in general, like you just said, be it from basketball to football to tennis to swimming, men dominate. And where the, where is the sport where men dominate, of course, the attention is going to be shown there. But in tennis, for instance, on a national level, you can just see like someone like Serena, has played it's extremely well in her field. People and even like to watch Serena more than the guys. Yes, they now. do. So the, it has started to shift. So what I'm saying is that what can we do so that it's the same here? In a situation where the women weren't winning, it's easy to say, but they're not winning the game. So really, who's going to watch it? But there has to be some sort of attention that is given to them so that people begin to tune in and begin to realize that, hey, these women are winning. We should begin to pay more attention. And then that way, maybe they can get the sponsorship in. Yeah, that, that, that's where the challenge really should be mm -hmm. for the media. And yes. I, I, I mean, thankfully, you are involved. Yes. So probably you have a lot more to do <laughs> in trying to promote yes. um, what the girls are doing. Uh, and promote the personalities. It's also mm -hmm. to do with yeah. personalities. Yeah. The public yeah. has to know them and love they them. They really and have buy to know them. them. Yeah, that's exactly how I should be. Uh, because the women are a lot more delicate, mm. um, they need a lot more attention. Mm, they, their playing span is, is a lot shorter than what the guys mm. um, will have to do because they have to take care of a lot of other needs mm. and make their families mm. and mm. attend to other needs. So we really need to give them that kind of attention. And I hope that um, uh, the ladies will begin to get the kind of respect mm -hmm. that, they, that they deserve. Mm. Thank you so much for coming, we really appreciate for joining you us this morning. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'd like to do this again. Yeah. It's